All right, we're going to continue working on like test taking skills. So before we read ice cream poem, put your name and mailbox number and today's date on there. So before we start with this, in a poem, poems are organized, you know, similar to like how we would write uh, a story, except each one of these groups is called a stanza. What's it called? Stanza. So it's the group of lines together. So how many stanzas does this poem have? There are eight. And then in each one of these stanzas, how many lines are there? Four. Right. Okay, so let's go back to the questions before we read the poem. We'll read through the questions. So the first one says to read the stanza from the poem and then answer the questions. Now, do you see the bolded words in that stanza that they're giving us? Mm -hmm. We're gonna be reading that and we're gonna be answering what type of figurative language is used there and then why the author used that particular figurative language. Look at question two down at the bottom of the page. It says, a student thinks that the ice cream shop worker in the poem is kind. Which two lines from the poem support the student's claim? Choose two. So how many answers will we be circling? Two. Two, all right. So we're gonna have to think about which of those lines show that the ice cream worker is what? Kind. kind. Circle that word kind in there. A student thinks that the ice cream shop worker in the poem is kind. And then also circle or highlight or underline choose to so that you are Seeing that as we reread that before you choose your answer choices. Okay, then flip it over. This is a shorter one today. Ice cream poem question three. There's two parts though, part A and part B. Part A is how did the main character of the poem feel when he realized he forgot to pay for the ice cream? And then part B is which stanza, remember the stanza, that's the group of lines together, which stanza from the poem supports your answer to part A. All right, let's go back and take a look at the poem, um, ice cream poem. Everybody on the front page now? Okay, read it with me. On a sweltering summer day, I mowed lawns in the heat. When I was finally done, I thought I'd earned a treat. To my favorite ice cream shop, down the street I trooped. I spied my choice and ordered the worker smiled and scooped. Cookie dough mixed with fudge, I got my favorite flavor. Three scoops of pure perfection that I couldn't wait to savor. Down to the park I strolled to find a shady spot to lay. 
Once there, I suddenly realized that I forgot to pay. My heart a beating drum, I hustled back to the shop. I hadn't taken a single bite until I paid, I could not stop. I apologized sincerely when I flew right through the door, slapped four dollars on the counter and dropped my eyes down to the floor. The worker then assured me, this happens quite a bit. He smiled as he added, don't worry about it. Then I felt so relieved, pain made me feel so free. I enjoyed a delicious bite. It was as sweet as honesty. Okay, question one again. So they give us a stanza from the poem. Then I felt so relieved, pain made me feel so free. I enjoyed a delicious bite. It was as sweet as honesty. What type of figurative language is used in that last line of the stanza? Now remember what similes are. It's been a while since we've talked about those. It compares two things using, anybody remember the clue words? Amy? As or, do you remember the other one? As or like. Okay. Is it imagery? Are they trying to put a picture of it in your mind? Is it a metaphor where they're comparing two things but they don't use like or as? I will tell you it's not a hyperbole. Which one do you think it might be? In front of you, show me if you think it's A, B, or C. But no looking around the room. A, B, or C. Right in front of you so that nobody can see. A, B, or C. Remember, a simile compares two things using the words like or as. Imagery is making that picture in your mind. And metaphor is comparing two things, but it doesn't use like or as. So what are you thinking? A, B, C. Okay, so now go down to part B. Why did the author include this figurative language? A, to exaggerate how good the ice cream tasted. B, to help the reader imagine the flavor of the ice cream. C, to help the reader understand how frustrated the character felt about forgetting to pay. D, to use the word sweet to compare the taste of the ice cream and the feeling of being honest. All right, everybody ready for question two? Yep. A student thinks that the ice cream shop worker in the poem is kind. Which two lines from the poem support the student's claim? Choose two. A, I apologized sincerely. B, don't worry about it. C, this happens quite a bit. D, it was as sweet as honesty. E, the worker smiled and scooped. Which two of those prove that the worker is kind, that he was kind? All right, then we're going to look at three.
A, part A. How did the main character of the poem feel when he realized he forgot to pay for the ice cream? A, excuse me, A, brave, B, truthful, C, panicked, D, indifferent. Indifferent just means didn't feel anything really about what happened. Okay, then part B. Which um, stanza from the poem supports your answer to part A? So you're going to have to look at stanza two, stanza three, stanza five, and stanza eight and decide which one of those supports your answer. About how the character felt when he realized he forgot to pay. All right, everybody finished with that? Okay, I'm just gonna have you leave it on your desk for right now. We're gonna do another one. This one's gonna make you hungry again. How to make pizza. All right, again, name, mailbox number, today's date. Okay, let's look at the questions that go with this um, passage. If it's called How to Make Pizza, do you think that it's going to be fiction or nonfiction? A lot of you said nonfiction. Why would it be nonfiction? Because Amy? Because something like Jane might be going back to have a pizza. Okay. All right, so let's look at question one together. So we're going to be reading that sentence from the passage and then answer the question to go with it. When you are satisfied, do you see the bolded word satisfied? Mm -hmm. Friends, we're looking at question one. When you are satisfied with the amount of sauce on your pizza, it is time to add the topping. So you're going to have to think about what the word satisfied means, and you'll just choose what you think is the meaning of it. So basically, we're finding a synonym for it, right? But we're not doing this right now. We're just going through the questions first so that we know what we're going to be looking for and needing to pay attention to while we read. Okay, question two. Um, another sentence from the passage. Sprinkle some flour on the counter and dough if it is too sticky. Which word from the sentence does not have a homophone? We have talked about homophones. Do you remember what they are, though? They're like two words that if they sound the same, except they're not. They mean, like, two, they don't mean the same thing. Exactly. They sound the same but they don't mean the same thing and they're not spelled the same way. Okay. Let's look at the back side there. Question three. 
Which question is answered in the passage? So it gives you four questions. You're going to have to find the one that is answered in the passage. How much cheese should be put on a pizza? What are the steps for making homemade pizza sauce? How does a person know when the pizza is done baking? What is the most popular type of pizza enjoyed by Americans? Question four, how is the passage organized as a description with steps in sequence? Do you know what in sequence means? We've talked about that before too. In the correct order, things happen. In cause and effect, so because this happened, this was the result of that, that's cause and effect, or by comparing and contrasting two topics. Last question. Put the steps for making a pizza in the correct order according to the passage. So friends on this one, class, class, on this bottom one, off to the side, or you can either do it, write them like this, horizontally, or you can write them vertically. You're gonna put these six steps in the correct order. The thing is, you're not going to rewrite the whole sentence. You are only going to write the letter in the correct order. Does that make sense? So if you think that D is the first step, add cheese and other toppings, that's what you would write down first is D, but I will tell you it's not D. That's not the first step. Okay. All right. Let's read through how to make a pizza. Follow along with me. You can read with me if you'd like to. Show me that you're following along. Where are we at? Yeah. Point to it. Okay. There is something. You know what, friends? We've got people just doing their own thing. So you're going to read this on your own, and you're going to answer the questions on your own today. Okay? All right. Go ahead. <laughs> 